All right, we're going to spend some time talking about the first chapter, and this is talking about the safe recruiting practices. Now, um, I had assigned for you to read the intro part on the safe hiring practices, and so let me cover some terms that you need to know uh, that's going to affect you and impact you through the rest of this course. They need to become second nature to you, so just you know, hold on here. Within the book on page 15, you got some key definitions here, and this is uh, what you need to pay attention to. First one's called protected class. A protected class means a class or a category in which a person is, is part of, right? And uh, it's protected based upon their protected class status. You'll hear that, protected class status. Basically, if it's against the law to discriminate against a person because of something, that's a protected class, right? So, for example, uh, Civil Rights Act of 1964, that prohibits discrimination and harassment based on color, nationality, uh, you know, national, or national origin, uh, sex, gender, and religion, right? Those are the, those are the big five. So um, we can't do anything towards a person. We can't refuse to hire them. We can't refuse to promote them. We can't give them crappy jobs because they belong to one of those categories. Uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act. If a person is either disabled or they're perceived to be disabled, or we think that they could be disabled and we treat them differently, that's an issue there. That's, uh, th that's doing something towards them because of their protected class. You get it? So if it's against the law uh, for us to discriminate against, and we do, right, we're infringing upon their protected class status. All right, down here on page 15, the lower part is a BFOQ. This is called a bona fide occupational qualification. What that means is we are looking specifically for a person who fits a uh, specific category that is otherwise protected by law, but we need it for this particular, um, this particular job. So for example, if I were a ministry, for example, with a specific religion, and I'm looking for a pastor to, um, to be well-versed and promote our membership, right, our, our, our faith, then it's a BFOQ, it's a bona fide occupational qualification that we have that person be a member of our specific religion. That's okay. Uh, if you're looking for a, a nursemaid, <laughs> it's got to be female, right? Guys just don't have the, uh, have, have what it takes. Uh, if it's, if you're looking for some, anyway, there's, there's a handful of things that may be a, a specific BFOQ. And so that's what they're talking about there. And then finally here on the next page on 16, discrimination. Discrimination is really when we take some kind of action that affects a person's terms or conditions of employment um, that's, that, that we do based upon their protected class status. And so if we refuse to hire somebody because they're black, we refuse to promote someone because they're Hispanic, we refuse to give a great job assignment t to somebody because they're female, we, um, uh, we, we don't send somebody to training that they really wanted to because they're pregnant. You know, it, take your pick. If we, if we do some things that are really boneheaded, to be honest, uh, if we do some things that affects the terms and conditions of employment for a person because of a protected class, that's discrimination. So going into uh, chapter one here, starting on page 23, as we take a look at the, the safe recruiting practices, they do a pretty good job of what you can and cannot say. They don't create an exhaustive list, but it really should make sense. What you can say are things that are specific to the job itself, things that you actually need in order to, to have somebody qualified for a position. So for example, if you need somebody at a professional level, accountant for example, in order to be an accountant they have to have at least their five year bachelor's degree program, right? Um, we may require a CPA, a certified public accountant certification. We may require some of those things. Those are specific to the job and we can require those. What you can't do is require things that really aren't necessary for the job. So for example, if we're hiring somebody as a gas station attendant to go pump gas, uh, it doesn't make any sense to require a college education, right? We can't require a college degree because to be honest, it doesn't require that to be able to learn how to pump gas, right? Uh, front end teller at a bank, same thing. Maybe we want somebody with some experience in counting money or handling transactions, but the basic functions don't require a college degree, so we can't require that. When we start to require things that we uh, start to require things that, that are not really required to do the job, that's where we start to cross the line and we get into some trouble. All right? They give some pretty good examples, right? Uh, specific uh, age limits. If it's over the age, of, if it's 18 or older, then it all falls into the same category, right? If it's uh, below 18 and we're talking about hiring kids, hmm, that's a different situation. But if, the, if, if we're hiring people that are 18 or older, we can't use age as a specific basis upon which to 
discriminate, right? Oh, they're 45, the other candidate was 25. I want the 45 year old because they're older, so they've got more life experience. Doesn't work that way. We're looking at who's the most qualified to, to get the job. You know, again, who, uh, what can you say? Uh, you know, if it's specific to the job, it's going to count. That's why it's so important. We're going to talk about this a little bit uh, in, in putting together the job itself. You really want to take a look at the job and say, what does it take to make that work, right? When we hire somebody, what do we want them to do? Most of you have seen a job description before. A job description should lay out, here are the specific functions that we need this person to do. Here are the specific requirements that we need for the person in order to qual be qualified to do the job. If the job descriptions are done accurately and correctly, they're a great basis upon which to, to, to go out and recruit. If they're not done and they're done poorly, uh, then we're going to have some challenges, right? So provided that your job description is intact, right, you went out and you looked objectively as uh, what's, what's required, you can then use the job description as a sound basis upon which to, to do everything else. So for example, if you have certain requirements in this job description, you can put that into your advertisements. You can put that into your, um, your hiring questions, your interviewing questions we'll talk about in the next, next chapter. Uh, they can be very simple, right? So, for example, one of my favorite uh, ads of all time came from a, the Hillsboro Argus over in Hillsboro, Oregon. It's just outside of the Portland area. And uh, it said, wanted, five hard workers to replace five who wouldn't. And then the phone number, right? It, uh, hey, it works. But again, the more specific you can get in your recruiting strategies and your recruiting information, the easier that it is. Now, where you recruit is really up to you. In fact, you don't, there's not a law that says that you're required to recruit out there and, and advertise in the newspaper, advertise in specific areas. There are some organizations that have put it into policy that they're going to follow certain things. And so if you have it in your policy, that's as good as it being law, right? You have to follow your own policies. But for most employers, you don't, you know, if you, you don't, there's not a law that says that you have to go out and advertise. But if you do advertise, then all these other regulations come into play. So anyway, um, so read through the rest of the chapter. They have some pretty good information. And then this casebook on page uh, 32 to 33 gives you a specific example that should help out. And then they give you a list on pages 36 and 37 of maybe some, some types of questions that are good or not good. If you have any questions about this that are specific, just let me know and I'd be happy to discuss them in the forum online so others can see what we're talking about too. So. Uh, again, let me know if you have any questions about Chapter 1. It's a good read, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of an intro. So, thanks.